The following interview was conducted with Harley J. Gers, Jr., Continuing Education, University Retiree, for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, June 9, 2009, in Stewart Center. Welcome. Good afternoon, thank and thank you. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and okay. your parents and siblings in early years. Well, I was born in Benton County, and uh, at one time there was a hospital in Earl Park, and that's where Mom went to deliver me. And so I grew up around Fowler, graduated from Fowler High School. Okay. Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, early years and also tell us about high school. And do you have any siblings, any brothers and sisters? No brothers and sisters. I'm a spoiled child. <laughs> uh, my dad farmed all of his life, rented farms all of his life in Benton County. And, um, Did you help out? No. Oh. No. He hired hard men, usually from Kentucky or someplace like that, had come up and work. He hired a hard man all the time. And so I didn't have to. I was pretty free. Uh, Tell us a little about your high school days. Do you recall, was it a large school? Or no, Fowler High School. No, Fowler was not a large school. In fact, I got a shock. I went by the place and it's gone now. It's just an empty lot. Uh, any, did you participate in student, any activities or well, athletics? Well, played in the band and played basketball. Uh, they had, had a high school group called High Y and I was a member of that. What sort of group was that? What kind of group? Well, it was just a kind of a social, high school social club. Uh -huh. Male only, I think, at the time. <clears throat> and. Um, how large was your class? About 30. Mm. Small class. Sure. Um, we lived on the farm, which was about five miles out of town there. So I'd <clears throat> ride my basket bicycle into basketball practice, and if the weather was bad, then Mom or Dad would pick me up. They were always there to pick me up. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Mom was active in the church and uh, taught Sunday school and usually was a representative from the church to the annual conference, and so we went to church usually Sunday and usually midweek, and uh, that was about it. Okay. And then uh, how did, where, tell us about college, how did well, you decide where do you go, and tell us about your college I got days. a scholarship to Indiana Central College, now the uh, University of Indianapolis, and so was there for four years, and graduated in 1950, and Carol and I were married that afternoon, so we celebrated our 59th wedding anniversary, June the 5th. Oh, nice. Did you meet her while you were yeah, in college? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. She was from Tecumseh, Michigan at the time. Uh, she had, had a, uh, two sisters, and uh, her folks lived in Tecumseh. Mm -hmm. Her mother was a nurse and worked for a company in Tecumseh, Michigan. You, then you boarded. What was the residence hall like? What was that like there? At Central? Uh -huh. Just a male dorm, uh, cot, cots in the room. And it was a church conference, no drinking or gambling or anything like that. Uh, I got a dual education because I went back when the veterans were returning, and I'll tell you, that bunch was quite an experience for me anyway, fresh from the farm and never... <laughs> It's a different crowd. It really was. It really was. I bet. Yes. Yeah. And changed the whole philosophy of the Indiana Central College, yes. Oh, sure. What was your major while you were in? Physical education. Okay. And history yeah. and social studies. I taught driver's training and social studies and at Goodland when I went there as a coach in 1955. Mm -hmm. So after, after you went into teaching, then after you graduated? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How large was your class at this end college? Not large at all. Yeah. Uh, I would guess right around 75 or 80. Oh, yeah. That's a mm -hmm. nice size. Mm -hmm. So then tell us about the teaching. Tell us about your career path before you well, came to Purdue. Well, then I graduated from Indiana Central. Like I said, in the morning we were married in the afternoon. And I went to Goodland as a coach. And Carol went to a little school called Wadena as a grade school teacher. And we lived there in Goodland. And uh, I taught seven classes a day and coach all the sports including junior high and high school. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big schedule. It was, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And I was not a good teacher 
So it was a good thing when I left there to become principal at a little school called Chai Lai, spelled Chile, but they pronounced it Chai Lai. So I was at Goodland for five years, and then Chai Lai as principal for five years. And Chai Lai was consolidated into the North Miami Consolidated School District, and I became the first superintendent of that school corporate division. And after five years, I re resigned and come back here to graduate student to work on a master's degree and Ph.D. <clears throat> Excuse me. Did you have any children by then? Yeah, we have we have three boys. Uh -huh. um, this is embarrassing. Carrie, the oldest, was, is, was born in 1952, and Greg then was born a year later, and Brad a year later, so they're fairly close together. But the oldest and the, and the middle one, or the youngest one, are in Chicago, and then Greg, the middle one's in the Jonesville, or Jonesville, Ohio. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, we have a grandson and a granddaughter, and the granddaughter is pregnant, so I'm going to be a great-grandpa one of these days. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. The family keeps growing. <coughs> yes, it does. Yes, yeah. it does. All right. Well, then, then uh, when, what was your major when you were uh, at Purdue, and where did you live? Education. You, education. Yeah. Well, I drove back and forth from, we moved from a little town called Denver, where I was superintendent, to Frankfurt, and Carol taught at an elementary school there, and I drove back and forth from Frankfurt to Purdue. Finished my master's and eventually the PhD, all in education. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And then what came next after the after you finished? Well, next was then Frank Byrne invited me back as a graduate assistant and continuing education. So I was on a five year cycle: five years as a coach, five years as a principal, and five years as a superintendent, and then back here. It's been I think forty years here. That's quite a long time. Yes. Yeah. Tell us a little about the continuing it, about some of your duties and responsibilities. And well, you when I back. first started, uh, <clears throat> where were you? Where is it located in Stewart Center as yes, it is today? Okay. My office was in the ticket hotel for the Fowler Hall initially. <laughs> and Larry Nelson was there in continuing education, and Frank Byrne then was named director of continuing education under Vice President Lawshe. And uh, at that time, conferences were. It's just so so, but then there was an executive memorandum that came out and said all conference activities would be administered through the division of conferences, and that changed things consist considerably. And I don't think that's true nowadays. I think it's gone back to a fairly loose, structured mm -hmm. situation. What was the, tell us about what the continuing education was in the early days. Whom did, or the researchers? I'm trying to think what what all that involved. Well, it, it just strictly was conferences. Oh. No continuing no. education at all? Just kind of no conferences. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> Did it grow over time? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And you had some, some pretty big yes. ones. They still run the pretty big, as they now, in the summer when there's more space well, available? I talked with Gary Lou, Lee, who was director following me, and he said a lot of the, 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 the long-term ones have left, and particularly since that executive memorandum was changed, and they went back to the individual professors did their own conferences wherever they could and so forth, so I'm, I don't know what's going on now. Sure. But, but you co the uh, conferences coordinated yes, all of that. Yes. Uh, that's a big, that's a was, big thing to do, was, food and everything like yes. that. Uh, budget and a lot of money was returned to departments through the income from those and a lot of the, we were a profit organization and some, some of the money went over was pulled out by Vice President Brown then to support other activities he had. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> did, what about staffing? Uh, did, uh, well, what were the what did the coordinators? I mean, what would a conference coordinator do? I'm trying to think. What well, what, we'd, we'd counter a conference, and one of my job was then to assign a coordinator to that conference, and then they would start from scratch and planning and set up the program, get staff, help them get staff people, and and just. Just was a coordinator for the whole affair sure. and work work all the way through yes, until the event yes, itself. Yes, yeah, yes. You probably any outstanding examples? Do you have any snafus or anything that you'd like to share? <laughs> Those <laughs> I, always happen. Yes, I just know that the first one I had was with uh, in civil engineering, and and I can't remember the old guy that was his hair that would be. He was a Harold Michael. No, oh. it goes back further than Harold Michael. Okay, and. Uh, 
he always had trouble with audiovisual things. And so when I was assigned, he said, young man, he said, I don't care what you do, but when we had to get into visual, I want the audiovisual there when we want it there. <laughs> and so we did, and he was always a great friend of mine from then on. And we always had a lot of people in civil engineering doing conferences. Rudy uh, Reed did a lot of conferences. And, uh, Did the high and then the highway? They still have that yeah, highway thing. Yes. That that goes way back. Yes, oh it? yeah, it's been a long time. And, yeah, uh, it gradually I think went out the university in or places because of facilities. Right. They always had that armory where they put the equipment in, but it was a long term one. Right. Uh, when I, the one I had was a coordinator for was United Association of Plumbers and the Pipe Fitters, which was a huge one. Yeah. I remember when they came. Uh, yes, a lot of money. They supported a lot of things, and uh, they were here for a long time, yeah. weren't they? Until and they were big part ears, drinking and eating. And Sarge Bills really grew up with them. And when they left, he just about panicked. I'll tell you because they were down there all the time. I yeah. heard that. <laughs> what a bunch. Oh. Uh, They've changed the name. Used to be like Office of Instructional Ed and Lifelong Learning, and yeah. then now continuing education yes. and conferences. So they sort of come back to that. I yes. think. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what was the onus for all of that change, but it was a Center for Lifelong Learning, yes. And then continuing education, I think, because it broadened this area for conferences, probably was one of the reasons they did that. Sure. He used to have um, those short courses in the winter for the farmers that mm -hmm. used to come, and they don't have those anymore. No, we didn't do those. Oh. At one time, Frank was in charge of the summer session, but then that would gradually transfer to the schools, and they did their own thing then. Okay. But when he first started, he was over the summer session, too. And then, <clears throat> like I said, they went back to the schools for that. And you had some changes in the heads and um, reporting structure changed, didn't it? Yeah, Larry Nelson was the f first director, and then Frank Byrne became the next director, and Frank was here, well, the time I was here. Mm -hmm. Is he still alive? No, he, he died several years ago. Oh, okay. He was an all-time favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. See, he was teaching at Fowler when I he, he came. He came there as a teacher the year I graduated, and so... Your paths crossed again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He called. I don't know how he got on about the graduate assistantship, but it, he finally said, "Now, Griff, you got to make up your mind. You're either going to take this or not." So that was the onus to come back here. <laughs> he made me make a decision, <laughs> and that was a big one to, yeah. to quit with three boys and do that. But with Carol getting a job at Frankfurt and living there and driving back and forth, it worked out. Sure. Right. They had uh, the variety of programs, and when Dr. Berry in the 1990s, you had a lot of programs, didn't you? Really? Um, it may have been during his. I'm not sure whether it was Hanson or Berry that the, that executive memorandum came out, but that was the thing that really brought conferences into Purdue University. And of course, the facilities were some of the best in the whole state. Yeah. With the Hall of Music and Fowler Hall and the dorms, and everything, everything was great. And you had, the, you had the rooms along here, yes, too. Yes, yes. It, it couldn't have been here at a better time for conferences than then. Right. Uh, used to, and I remember Dave Moses, an audiovisual yes, center, yes. used to be pretty much involved. Yes. He was involved, I remember, in that the plumbers and pipe yes. because they used to yes. do a lot of things. See, I was very lucky because Dave became audiovisual, and that helped. I don't know what was the problem before, but with that, things really were organized and were a lot better. I was so lucky, so fortunate to, to be uh, along with some great people, great administrators. Yeah, that you worked with through the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's now conferences and continuing ed, yes. so they sort of yes. Uh, yes, and it's grown a lot. There's a lot of programs. Yes. Do they handle the online, the uh, continuing online programs? They've got some courses that you, you know. Can, you know, I don't know. Uh, they, they, that. I know that they offer those things. Okay. I think uh, uh, I can't remember her name right now. She was over in admissions, and I think she may be in charge of that now. Oh, okay. I know their offices are down on the ground mm -hmm. floor there mm -hmm. in the Stewart Center. That's right. And you served under, uh, when you came, Hubdy was the president, huh? Yes. And then Dr. Hansen yes. and Dr. Hicks, and mm -hmm. were you here yeah. when Dr. Baring was here too? Yes, yes. And Dr. Jeske. Barely. Um, Barely under Jeske. Okay. What, um, they all have, did you interact at any time with them? Very little. Okay. Um, <clears throat> 
How did the administration, did you, you had a, uh, Don Brown was the administrator. Don Brown, Jeff, yes. And then after well, Lashi, I remember, mm -hmm. was here. Lashi was first, and then yeah. Don Brown became, then the, the little gal who was, was a Afro-American was in there, I can't remember her name. Darlene Hine? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah she was with the, uh, mm -hmm. in that, I remember, that's right. <coughs> what, did you have any contact at all, um, I'm thinking of the research. Was any liaison or contact with the regional campuses at all? Well, as far as Lossy was over the regional campus when right, first that came. I know. Yes, yeah. yes, but we had very little direct contact with them. <coughs> Excuse me. You didn't arrange any. No. Uh, they wouldn't have any conferences they would hold here. They probably had people at the campus yeah. that handled this. Yes, sort of thing yes, they did their own thing. We would meet with their coordinators and directors from time to time. Sure. Trying to keep in touch that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any awards and honors that you recall? <coughs> any well, professional associations you'd like got, to share with I us? I got a Stanley C. Robinson Award, which was from Continuing Education National Organization one time. I what? was nominated by the conference director at Indiana University. Did you touch base with the uh, with Indiana at all time? Mm -hmm. Any time? Oh, you, yeah. have any, you ever have any joint no. events? No, but they liked a lot of the things that we did, and he copied some of them. That's well, good. copied is a little strong, modified, modified them. To, right, know. used examples or yes. whatever. Yes. Yeah. Craig was his name, and he was a dandy. Mm -hmm. At one time, I think that the personnel, you people used to work through the library personnel mm -hmm. office too at one time when Roger Smith was here. Yeah, they, well, they overplayed this athletic thing too much because there was not that much of a big deal between conferences in, in IU and Purdue. Mm -hmm. We had meetings with them frequently. Sure, right, that's nice. How about any professional associations that you belong to? And tell us about your work with the Rotary. And then, are you still active with the Rotary? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, when I got this knee op operated on, I had to resign as secretary. I was secretary for 20 years, and it was a very time-consuming job. I'd have to do a newsletter every week. and. Uh, I really enjoyed that, but when I quit Rotary to, for this, then also they called me and said that they had a budget problem, and so they let me go from conferences, and so I dropped out completely, and being very busy, and then stopping completely. And when they asked me, I said, retirement sucks a little bit, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned, because I really, really did drop out, and I can't get around enough to look for another job. When did you retire, Carly? Well, you know, Kathy, I'm not sure. Okay. I think <laughs> I, I re, uh, uh, first in, I think, 2002, Forsyth and I talked, and he was having budget problems, and I said, well, what if I retired? He said, fine. Would you stay on for a while? And I said, yes. So I stayed on for 25% for another two or three years, and then finally Phil Swain, at another budget time, called me in and thought needed the money, so when I retired. I think... You know, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Time gets away. Well, tell us what you've been doing in your retirement activities <laughs> after the knee, huh? Mm, not much, I'll tell you. Okay. Um, you still go to Rotary at all, though? Very seldom. Do you? Okay. Yeah. okay. Very seldom. It's a... Uh, they meet all year round, don't they? Yes, okay. once a week. Uh -huh. My main trouble is that when I go and I get seated, that they have a... Star Spangled Banner and a prayer, and you know, I struggle getting up out of the chair, and so it's kind of embarrassing that way, and so that's been one of the main reasons that I don't want to attend. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a ten dollar for the lunch, which is not that great. So, where do they meet at the University Inn? Is mm -hmm. that where they meet? Okay. Is that yes? And um, they changed hands, and I got along so well with the original owners, and could talk with them and make suggestions and. The new ones, of course, I don't have any contact with them whatsoever. <laughs> <coughs> oh, do you have a, a favorite, do you have a Purdue tradition, a favorite tradition that you'd like to share with us comes to mind? Or how about an outstanding event? You can have both or whatever. No. Mm -hmm. Any outstanding event that comes to mind? No. Uh, did you go to, well, your children, did your children attend Purdue? One, one grad, the middle one graduated from Purdue. 
and one from IU and one from Ball State. So we treated everybody the same. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse good. me. Sounds good. Carol has her master's from Ball State, so that's why the oldest one went there, and he liked music, and so he graduated in the music school. Uh-huh. The youngest one wanted to go to IU, and we said no, but he said he wanted to become a doctor, so he got down there, and we liked to never got him out of Bloomington. <laughs> <We> <laughs> did he ever go, did he go to medical school? No, 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 he didn't. No. He got down there and having a good time and graduated from business. Uh-huh. Well, that's good. And uh, he went to Chicago <clears throat> and got, a, got acquainted with uh, options and has done very well financially there. And he's now a vice president on the board of options. Does he still live in the Chicago yeah. area? Yes. Uh -huh. I was just telling Mike that they all had a house on Lake Michigan, a beautiful area. And about the time that in Chicago, some, the police department shot a couple of wild animals in Lincoln Park. And the animal rights group got upset and they were going to try to burn Mayor Daly's house. And it was just behind Brad's and Tiffany's. And they set the grass on fire and burned their house down. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. When did this happen? Some time ago? About a year ago, a year and a half ago, something like that. They weren't home, I hope. No, no, no. no. What, whatever happened as a result of that, they get reimbursed or what? Well, the insurances are they're in the process of re rebuilding now. Uh, how about That's that? so dumb, but that whole slope went down to the Lake Michigan and it was just grass and so forth. And it just went up there. And oh. Of course, they. They were only there about weekends usually, and so. Sure, sure, right. Any uh, uh, anything special that you'd like to share with us at the end of closing? That uh, as you look back on it, in your university or your career, even in education, it's changed a lot. Yes. And the university has grown a lot since you came. Unbelievably so. Yes. <clears throat> well, of course, when I started, it was J.R. Mitchell and Clarence Pound, and they were highly involved with the high schools, and I think Purdue probably has shifted that emphasis a little bit and so mm -hmm. when you took classes in uh for your graduate work it was over in the education building yes. so it still, yes. it still existed yes. right yeah, a lot of classes with jr writer rr writer and, and jr mitchell as i said and clarence pound mm -hmm. and there was a lady in guidance that taught classes in too I can't remember her name. I remember one person that was <coughs> over there was Carolyn Whiteneck. Yes. She and she taught that media and she had a yes. summer program and I, she, I I got to know her and I used to yes. help out a little bit with yes. that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, great memories of some of those professors. I, J. R. Mitchell was such a was such a model for me. I can remember in class he would say, "Now when you're a principal." do something to get their attention. <laughs> and I never forget that my first year as principal at Chile, one of the seniors came down the hall whistling and I went down and grabbed him by the shirt and the and turkey trotted him three went out to school out the front door and of course that really set the stage for it. Things going work pretty well from then on. <laughs> uh, and Clarence Pound was a real dandy for me. Mm -hmm. A real dandy. Yeah. He guided me through the whole PhD process in fact, a couple of questions I didn't know know what the answers were, and he kind of gave me clues. And they were you worked with you. Yes, oh, Professor right. Houston was in political science. That was one of my minors, and Clarence Bound and, and Professor Houston mm -hmm. were in the oral examinations. And Clarence Bound was a, a great person as far as I'm concerned. And then Norbert Nelson took over, and he was my. I remember hearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Any anything special? Anything closing that, uh, as I said before, that you've come to? I know. I just will always have a warm spot in my heart for Purdue because they were so good to me. In fact, the retirement thing we've been in real trouble. Hasn't been for Purdue's retirement. Mm -hmm. Real trouble. Good, good program. Yes. Exactly. In fact, we may we're probably going to outlive our savings as far as that's concerned. But Again, we would have been in worse trouble if it hadn't been for Purdue and taking care of us these years. So Purdue will always be, I've been indebted for, to Purdue for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Good. Okay. Thank you very much, Charlie. I appreciate that. Well, very.